It's a verse that we started off with last week, and the Lord said we're going to start off with this verse again. As you are looking up Revelation 12, 11, I want to remind you or bring something to your attention this morning. As a body, we've been asking Jesus to take us to another level. Yes, Lord. How many here, let's be honest, are asking the Lord to take you to another level in Him? Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord was speaking to me yesterday. Hallelujah. I was listening to a very anointed teaching and the Holy Spirit started speaking. I believe the Lord does not want us to ask Him to take us to another level. I believe that's not what the Lord is wanting. Okay. Now let me say that again in case you're wondering. I don't know if pastor's hearing right. I don't believe the Lord wants us to ask Him to take us to another level. He wants us to ask Him to take us to another dimension. Ooh. There's a difference between levels and dimensions. And I believe this word is going to speak to some people in the room because God's been talking to you not about levels, but about dimensions. And you've been hearing the church praying for a new level and going, wait a minute, I'm not hearing levels, I'm hearing dimensions. There's a difference between levels and dimensions. What's the difference? A new level can take a hundred years plus to get to. Yep. Yep. A new dimension, a new realm in the Spirit can be opened up by the Spirit of the living God in a matter of moments. Amen. I want you to think about this now because this is important. When the telegraph was invented, it took over a hundred years for the cell phone to be invented based upon the initial invention of the telegraph. It took over a hundred years for the new level to take place. When the Wright brothers created that rudimentary airplane, from the time that rudimentary airplane, a kitty hawk, was created and flown for the first time on the beach, to the time the space shuttle pierced the atmosphere, it was over 120 years. It can take a hundred plus years to get to a new level. God wants to take us into new dimensions. How many receive that? When Adam was in the garden, Adam walked in multiple dimensions. I believe when Adam fell, we lost multiple dimensions, at least nine of them. I believe Adam was a superman and he could think himself from one side of the garden to the next. That's right. That's right. I believe when God came and walked with him in the garden, they communicated but didn't say a word to each other. They communicated like we communicate in the third heaven. It was a divine knowing. It was a divine dimension of communication. Now we're relegated to communication with the mouth. Yeah. How many are hearing what the Lord is saying? The Lord is wanting to restore the dimensions that Adam lost back to the church. I don't think you're getting this because you'd be way more excited if you did. Hallelujah. I believe the, the dimensions in the realm of the spirit that Adam lost, the second Adam is wanting to restore back to the church at the end of the age. So I want to encourage you, do not ask the Lord for new levels. Ask the Lord for new dimensions. The Lord says we're coming into a season where specific prayer, strategic prayer, is more important than ever. The Lord was talking to me last night while God was moving powerfully. And the Holy Spirit said to me, Andrew, you need to be more strategic. You can walk in the anointing, but not be strategic. We need the divine strategy of the Holy Spirit in this house. We've been walking in the anointing. We need the strategy. Anointing comes from the Holy Spirit. Strategy is released from the mouth of God at the throne of God and given to us by the Holy Spirit. We need to stop looking at the Holy Spirit as the one who simply brings the anointing. The anointing also wants to open up our, the Holy Spirit also wants to open up our eyes so we can see, our ears that we can hear. He wants to open us up to the realm of the divine strategy of God. He wants to bring the dimensions of God Amen. to the people of God. 
Let's not look at the Holy Spirit only one dimensionally. How many received that? I'm telling you guys, we're about to see the Holy Spirit release things in the church that the church has never seen before. We're coming into the realm of the very last chapter of the Gospel of John, where John said, I suppose if everything Jesus did were written in books, there wouldn't be enough books in all the world to contain it all. We're coming into that season in the Lord, and that season will be strategic, and it will be multi-dimensional, and God is wanting to take you to the next dimension in order to walk in the power of the age to come. We will only pierce those dimensions through intimacy with Jesus. We will only pierce those dimensions through surrender to the Holy Spirit. We will only pierce those dimensions and walk in them as we surrender everything to the Lord Jesus. The Lord says there's nothing that you're holding on to right now that's worth what it will jeopardize that he wants to do in your life. How many are hearing this? There's no person. There's no relationship. Come on. There's no place. There's no attitude. There's no rebellion. There's nothing that's worth holding on to right now if it's going to hinder what God wants to do in your life in this next season that we're about to enter into. Right now, well, Pastor, you just said we're in a new season. We're in a new beginning. Yes, it's a new season before a new season. I believe the Lord is saying this morning, the last four weeks of this year are crucial. You've heard me saying this now, eight weeks, seven weeks, six weeks, five weeks, four weeks. I want to encourage you in the last four weeks that are available in this year, press into the secret place, listen to Jesus, carry your prophetic notebook and pen with you, pursue the heart of God like never before, and you're going to get divine strategy for your life for the new year. You're going to get divine strategy for this house for the new year. There are books that God is wanting to release through his people. There are golden pens that he's giving out in the last weeks of this year. Amen. And the golden pens have within them books that are already in the libraries of heaven that God is now releasing in the earth to, to, to provide strategy for the church at the end of the age. There are people in this room that God is giving golden pens to. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. Sometimes a golden pen looks like a key. Hallelujah. God wants us to understand this. What's God doing in some people's lives right now? He's releasing the refiner's fire over you. And he is jealously burning things up and moving things out of the way. I got to say this before we get in the message. This is the message before the message. We'll see if we make it to the message. Oh, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory. The Lord is saying for some in this room, I have been pruning and I have been purging. And some things that you had really been counting on and hoped was going to come through, I have pruned them. You've rebuked the devil. You thought the enemy got in and messed this thing up. God says, I grabbed my holy pruning shears and I locked that thing off you because you thought it was me and it wasn't me. You grabbed a hold of a distraction that the enemy wanted you to carry into this new year. Because 5783 is about to collide with 2023 and there's going to be an explosion in the Lord when that happens. Hallelujah. How many receive that? Amen. And God says, I'm lopping some things off. Don't blame the devil. The Lord says, discern. Because there's some things I'm lopping off of your life. And the Lord says, this is a season where obedience is better than sacrifice. Hallelujah. The Lord says, be obedient when I'm lopping off the shears. And like God told John a number of seasons back, the Lord says, don't try to reattach what I have lopped off. Because the Lord says it will bring grain green to the rest of your body. The Lord says it's time. The Lord says it's time. And he, the eyes of blazing fire that are the eyes of the Lord Jesus are releasing the refiner's fire over God's people right now. 
How many receive that in the Lord? God is releasing his refiner's fire over his people right now. And the Lord says, some of us have prayed dangerous prayers and we've sung dangerous songs. Anybody remember that old song? Refiner's fire. My heart's one desire is to be holy, set apart for you, my master, ready to do your will. Jason says, Jason, the Lord says to you this day, you have sung songs back in the day, and I am now bringing those songs into fruition and manifesting them and holding you accountable for the songs that you sang back in the day. And I am bringing into your very life what you've asked me for. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord says you've got a choice. And the Lord says, it's time now to choose him with all your heart. And the Lord says, if you will only give me all of your heart, I will give you everything your heart has ever desired. Because did I not say, delight yourself in me and I'll give you the desires of your heart. But know that he's changing the desires of your heart so they're really his desires. And that's what he's going to give you. The Lord says there's a lot of men of destiny that will stand before his throne at the day of judgment. And the Lord says, I have not designated you for wrath, but you will stand and we will give an account, the Lord says. The Lord says, many anointed men will stand before me and have missed the mark. The Lord says, don't miss the mark, anointed man of God. The Lord says, do not miss the mark. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord says, I'm bringing you in the songs and prayers that you've prayed. Josiah, the Lord says, I'm bringing you in the prayers that you've prayed. Prayers you prayed years ago at my altar. The Lord said, those prayers are still going before me in the harp and in the bowl, and I'm answering those prayers. The Lord says, I'm bringing things into fruition that you've forgotten that you even prayed, the Lord said. But my timing is perfect and my hand is mighty, and I'm bringing you into those things. Hallelujah. How many received that in the Lord? Amen. Holly, I'm hearing the Lord say again, he's repeating what he was saying last night. He says, I want you to stand up in the spirit of boldness in me. The wicked flee when no one pursues them, but the righteous are as bold as a lion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Proverbs 28.1. The Lord says, I've given you a prophetic mouth, and I'm calling you into your true place in this church. The Lord Amen. says, stand and release the words that I put in your mouth. Do not be silent. Amen. And the Lord says, as you open your mouth and you speak the prophetic words, you will go to another dimension and you will see the woman I've truly created you to be that you have not walked. Hallelujah. Oh, yes. Up to this point, the Lord says. How many received this in the Lord? I hear again people praying for the next level. The Lord says, pray for the next dimension. Yeah. Pam, pray for the next dimension. The Lord is saying, you've sat underneath anointed words from anointed teachers, and there is so much inside of you. Ask me for the next dimension, the Lord says. This is a Jeremiah 33, 3 season through the end of the year. He says, call upon me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know. Hallelujah. How do you receive that in the name of Jesus? Hallelujah. Hold Rabashandi Abaki. Hold Rabashiri Abaki. Hold Rabashandi Yes, Lord. I just, I just believe the Lord's just going to weave in and out of the prophetic in this entire message today. How many received that in the name of Jesus? Yeah. How many know this morning that the Lord has a plan, and in that plan, you win? Hallelujah. Let me say that again. How they know this morning that God has a plan for you, and in that plan, you win. Amen. And the Lord says, I want you to begin to see yourself as walking in victory in me. 
Yeah. The Lord says you got to see it before you walk in it. Yeah. The Lord says you got to speak it before you walk in it. But you can't speak it and you can't walk it out until you can see it in your sanctified imagination. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit says there's a lot of people that have an imagination that he desires to sanctify. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because the Lord says you cannot see it. You cannot speak it. You cannot walk in it until you allow me to sanctify your imagination. Yes. Come on. Yeah. Anybody remember when we were kids and as a kid, your imagination could take you anywhere? Yeah. Come on. And then somewhere in adulthood, we got taught that the, the, the imagination is something the enemy uses. It's evil. It's dark. It's wicked. No, God gave you an imagination. And the Lord says, as you go to the new dimension, you will see it first in your sanctified imagination. Come on. Amen. How many are hearing what the Lord is saying? You're asking for deeper waters here, aren't you? Amen. Okay, God is giving us deeper waters. The Lord says, ask me to sanctify your imagination because I'm about to show you things in your sanctified imagination before they happen. Yes. Come on. Mm -hmm. yeah. Call upon me and I'll answer you and I'll show you great and mighty things that you don't know. God says, call upon me. Ask. I want to give you dreams. I want to give you visions. I see people in this house driving down the road and all of a sudden they're in the realm of the Spirit in their sanctified imagination. And the Holy Spirit showing them new dimensions and new things before they ever take place. I just heard the Holy Spirit say this. Ooh, hallelujah. I do nothing until I speak it to my servants, the prophets. And this is a prophetic house. And the Lord says, stop thinking that I only speak in one way. I want to take you into new realms and dimensions of hearing my voice. And the Lord says, you can hear my voice in your sanctified imagination. Yes. Come on. Yes. Hearing is not only with your ears. Yes. Right? What did Paul say about seeing? He said, Lord, open up the eyes of our heart. Mm -hmm. Come on. Amen. We're so bound by the five senses. Holy Spirit is saying in the new dimensions, there are new senses that you're going to begin to walk in. Amen. Yes. Glory. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. How do you receive this in the Lord? Amen. The Lord says, I'm not a one dimensional God. Stop yes. looking at me one dimensionally. Amen. He says, I'm not a one dimensional God. Stop looking at me one dimensionally. He says, I'm the God of the impossible. He said, I, ooh, the Lord says, don't forget, I said to a 12 year old virgin that you're going to conceive and you're going to carry Yeshua in your womb. And the Lord says, what was her response? It was not the response of her cousin's husband. Zechariah, who the angel had to shut his mouth so he could not speak against the word that was spoken. Hallelujah. The Lord says what she said was, let it be unto me according to thy word. Hallelujah. And what did she do? The word didn't say like Joseph. She went out and told anybody that had ears. The word says, and she treasured these things in her heart. There are going to be things that God shows you in the realm of your sanctified imagination that you are not to tell anyone one. You're to keep them between yourself and God. Amen. Because if you release that word prematurely, Joseph, you may end up in prison. And the word of the Lord will test you. The Lord says unnecessary testing will come if you release the word before it's time. Amen. The Lord said be a, be a people of my timing. Thank you, God. Be a people of my timing. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Be a people of my timing. The Lord says, my prophetic people hear a word and they rush to release it. The Lord says, it's not your word to release. Yeah. It's my word. The Lord Jesus said, am I not the spirit of prophecy? It's my word. Ask me when to release my word. Thank you, God. Amen. 
The Lord says, it's not your anointing, it's my anointing. Amen. Come on. And the Lord is calling us to begin to see things the way that he sees them. That's right. Amen. Everything you have is his. Hallelujah. Sitting with Sister Connie last night, she said to me, the Lord told her, Hallelujah, don't do anything without asking me first. That's right. Yeah. She said she was in a store and she had some items she was going to buy. She got to the register and the Holy Spirit said, I didn't tell you to buy those things. Put them down and leave. Amen. I'd rather have obedience than sacrifice. That's right. And here's the thing. The body of Christ is taught obedience and sacrifice. We haven't walked it. But the Lord says the body of Christ is going to begin to see what we've never seen before. We're going to begin to speak what we've never spoken before. And therefore, we're going to begin to walk in dimensions we've never walked in before. Hallelujah. But the Lord says He'd rather have obedience than sacrifice. Right. But I also heard the Lord say this morning, some things will cost you obedience and sacrifice. And the Lord says, I want you to understand this. The stakes are getting higher. We're coming to the end of the age. Is anybody hearing that? Oh, yeah. The Lord says the stakes are higher and we're coming to the end of the age. No, no longer can you be like Abraham. Abraham took a supernatural promise of God and he combined it with human ability. And it created a hot mess. Is anybody catching this? God gave him a divine promise. A man with no children and a wife with a barren womb would have a promised child. Come on. It was a picture of what God was going to do with Mary. How many know we, oh, we serve the God who loves to open the barren womb? Amen. Oh, come on. We serve the God that loves to open the barren womb. You look at the line of Christ and more than once God brings a barren Gentile woman into the line of Christ to preserve the line. I hear the Lord say there's barren spiritual wombs that I'm about to open. Put your hand over your womb right now and then you have a spiritual womb. I got a word from the Lord for you. Okay, so guys, don't you be putting your hands somewhere else. You just put your hands on your womb right now. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would release the anointing to open barren spiritual wombs in this room. Lord, I ask that you would release the anointing, Lord God Almighty, to open the barren womb in this place. Lord, the barren womb of this house, the barren womb of people that are in the sanctuary, the barren womb of people, hallelujah, listening in. Lord, may your supernatural anointing come. Open the barren wombs. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, I command your womb to open right now. Barren womb, open in the name of Jesus right now. Open in Jesus' name. The Lord says, I'm opening your barren womb. Hallelujah. I don't fully understand that one, but there's a whole lot to it, woman of God. The Lord says, I'm opening your barren womb. In the name of Jesus, I command the trauma that came upon this womb to make it close. I command that trauma, leave in the name of Jesus right now. I command that trauma that closed this womb so the enemy could not, because so, the enemy wanted to get in the way so the fruit of this womb wouldn't come forth. I break that through the blood of Jesus right now. Womb open in Jesus' name. Womb open in Jesus' name. I hear the Lord say children. I hear the Lord say children. I hear the Lord say you... God's just laying it out. Is this okay, daughter? I hear the Lord say, you will have children. I hear the Lord say, you will have a family. I hear the Lord say, you knew that the womb was closed. I heard the Lord say, I will open your spiritual womb, and I will open your physical womb. I speak life over your womb in the name of Jesus. Come alive to bear children when you marry that man of God. 
Hallelujah. His way, His timing, His blueprint, His alignment. And woman of God, I hear the Lord say, you know that I'm speaking this morning. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, we give you total freedom. Oh, thank you, Lord. <laughs> oh, thank you, Jesus. Woo, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I speak barren wounds are opening up all over this room right now. All over for those that are listening in right now. I decree and declare God's opening up barren spiritual wounds. God God's opening up barren wounds in the realm of the natural. And I declare, God is opening up the barren womb of your imagination right now. <laughs> Just put your hand over your, your head like this. Lord Jesus, for everyone who has their hand over their head in faith right now, I ask that you would open up the barren womb of their imagination. Lord, the womb of their imagination went barren when they believed that their, their imagination was evil as they grew older. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would pierce through that lie of the devil and break it. Shit! In the name of Jesus, and I speak an opening of the womb of your imagination. I just heard the Lord say, did I not talk about opening the womb of the dawn? <laughs> Ooh, hallelujah. The Lord says, I'm opening up the womb of your barren imagination. And I speak sanctification over your imagination. And I believe God's going to begin to show you things you've never seen before. Hallelujah. Say, I'm going to see things I've never seen before. <laughs> Through the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Lord says, I want you to be very careful in this season. We're not going to make it to the word. I thought we were going to make it to. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to close the notes in obedience to the Lord. So I'm not tempted to go back. You know, we can't go back anymore. The Lord says, You can't go back anymore. The Lord says, Stop visiting. A gravesite. <laughs> because the Lord says every time you do, you become one with the grave. That's right. And the Lord says, stop visiting the gravesite because it's not who you are anymore. And God says, I want my people to begin walking as who they really are. There's a battle over destiny right now. The Lord says, I want my people to begin walking for in who they really are, in that true identity of who they really are. There's a battle right now over your destiny, JT. What are you going to believe? You did something very countercultural multiple Sundays ago. You asked Jesus to come in your heart. The Lord says you're the beachhead in your family. And the Lord says you've got a nice, wonderful, incredible family that doesn't realize how much they need Jesus because they're such wonderful people. But the Lord says, you realize that you had a need for me and you received me as your Savior. The Lord said, now I want to begin to move in your family through you. The Lord says, don't think they're going to understand. Don't think they're going to get it. The Lord said, the things that you're about to move in, you wouldn't have gotten it a couple of years ago. The Lord said, if I came up and told you, if I called you on the phone, you'd have gone, oh, that's great, Pastor. Wonderful, wonderful. Good to talk to you again. The Lord said, I'm about to bring you into things. That your eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor mind imagined in you. The Lord said, I'm about to do those things in your life. The Lord says, you see me walking in things that you're going to walk in. Because the Lord says, as you sit in that seat, as you listen to the messages on Sundays that you haven't been able to come, the Lord said, that anointing is coming upon you. You're sitting underneath it. If you're underneath the flow of the shower, the water hits you. The Lord says, you're underneath the flow in this house, and the flow is hitting you. And you are taking things in that you don't realize, and your mouth is about to open and speak things that you never thought you'd speak before. You're going to utter the mysteries of the Spirit of God. Jesus. And you're going to see your family saved. The Lord said, do not be afraid over this Christmas season to make me known to your family. The Lord says, do not be afraid. The Lord said, don't think they're going to understand this church thing right now. But they will. They will. They will. They will. And Taylor, I believe the Lord is saying this morning, don't worry, I'm going to bring a breakthrough in your family too. The Lord says, am I not the God who can move objects that man thinks are immovable? The Lord said, I can turn the heart of the king like a water course. Don't you think I can turn the heart of your family? 
The Lord says, don't give up on me healing your family. Right now I see a veil of black over your family, but I see the Spirit of God blowing on that veil and I see the veil coming off. Hallelujah. And eyes will be opened and I see restoration coming. The Lord says, I love to restore families. Hallelujah. I'm watching God do it in my family right now. I hear the Lord say, I love restoring families. I'm the God of household salvation. The Holy Spirit was saying a moment ago, hmm, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. What a man sows, he's going to reap. Come on. The Lord is saying that. The Lord says you need to be very careful the seed that you're sowing right now. The Lord says you sow time, talents, and resources. Those are seed. The Lord says we need to be more careful with the fourth way we sow seed with our mouths. The Lord says be very careful with the seed that you're sowing with your mouth. Your words become reality. The Lord said I speak to that which is not as if it is and it becomes. The Lord says your words create reality the Lord says, that's why I want you to be in your in my word. That's why I want you to be listening to my spirit. That is why I want you to have your finger on the pulse of what I'm doing so that you can speak in alignment with what I am decreeing from my throne. The Lord says, you can decree and declare from three places. The Lord says, you can decree and declare from what I'm speaking in the realm of the Spirit. You can decree and declare what the enemy is speaking. You can decree and declare what your flesh is speaking. The Lord says, I only want you to decree and declare what my spirit is saying. And if you're in a situation where you're about to open your mouth and you're not going to speak what my spirit is speaking, shut your mouth. Amen. Amen. That's harsh. But the Lord says, keep your mouth closed. If you're going to speak something that's going to give your flesh ground or it's going to give the enemy ground, God says your words become reality. Your words are the seed that you sow the most. And he says you sow those seeds every day. The Lord is saying we're coming into the Genesis 26, 12, 13, and 14 season in the Lord. And it's the season that's going to last until he returns. Genesis 8, as long as the earth remains, there will be seed time and harvest. Genesis 26, 12, 13, and 14. And Isaac planted his seed, and that year he received a hundredfold harvest. Yeah. The Lord says, I want you to be careful. This is an exhortation, and this is a warning from the Lord. The Lord says, the exhortation is this. I'm putting an anointing on your seed. I put an anointing on the seed of your time, your talents, and your resources. But I'm also putting an anointing on the seed of your mouth like never before. The Lord says, be careful because the seed you plant, I'm going to bless it a hundredfold. Did God not say to Abraham... The son you had with the slave girl, I will make a mighty nation out of him also. But he'll be like a raw bone donkey. And we're still battling Abraham's seed to this day. It's the seed of promise versus the seed of disobedience. The Lord says in the season that's coming, there's such an anointing in your life. Do not cause the seed of promise to war with the seed of your disobedience. How many are hearing this? The Lord says you need to be careful because I am putting the Isaac anointing on your seed. But the Lord said not just part of your seed, on all of your seed. Amen. Amen. Is anybody hearing this? Yes. So the Lord says, be very careful with the seed that you're planting. Because it's going to be blessed, just like Abraham sleeping with the servant girl. Fruit came out of that, and God made a mighty nation out of that too. But how many know 
God says, I will even take the seed of your disobedience and I'll turn it out for good. Because you know what the word prophesies? Not only are we going to see revival in Israel, we're going to see revival amongst the sons of Ishmael. Amen, Amen. Amen brother Edward. Yeah. We're going to see Egypt and Assyria and Samaria and all these I other will, nations will, come and worship yeah. at the holy yeah. mountain. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. Yeah. Here's the thing. Let's not allow there to be much seed of disobedience, guys. Because the, the blessing on obedience is so much better. Yeah. How many receive that? The blessing on obedience is so much better. The Lord says, I'd rather have obedience than sacrifice. Hallelujah. And the Lord says, there's some things I'm calling you into. He's repeating this. The Lord said, there's things I'm calling you into that are going to require obedience. There's some things I'm calling you into that are going to require sacrifice. But the Lord says, there's some things I'm calling you to that are very significant that will cost you obedience and sacrifice. Who is willing? Who is willing? I just heard the Holy Spirit say, we are the fragrance of Christ. To one, we're the fragrance of life. To the other, we're the stench of death. Who is equal to such a task? And the Lord says, you are becoming my fragrance. The Lord says, Sister Pam, Every time you get in the secret place. He might love it when God finishes our sentences. <laughs> Even days later. <laughs> and God had me sell my house and move into the ranch, and it's been difficult. I just heard the Holy Spirit say, Get alone with me in the basement and seek my face. Because I had you sell your house to take distraction away from you. And I've given you the time for it to be just you and me because I have taken you out of your job also. But I've given you the money that you need, have I not? And the Lord says, I only uproot to cleanse and plant good seed. Amen. He said, I am uprooting things, but I'll cleanse the ground Amen. and plant Let's see. And the Lord says, by the time we're done, you're not even going to recognize yourself because you haven't even seen the true, the true tree that you are yet. Hallelujah. You've seen the tree of pain. You've seen the, pain, the tree of tragedy. You've seen the tree of loss. The Lord says, you've known the fellowship of his suffering a lot. And through some decisions too. But the Lord says, I'm going to take you from suffering to the realm of the supernatural. The Lord has said, I'm going to take you from pain to a place of prospering. And the Lord says right now, I put you in that basement so you can get along with me. He said, I gave you a key to this house so you can get along with me. And the Lord says, you've got one mission and one calling right now to spend time with me. And the Lord says, out of that, the fragrance of Christ is going to come. I'm over here and I hear the Lord say the fragrance of Christ. But in my, in my spirit, I saw perfume emanating from you. Hallelujah. And the Lord began to speak. You ever see the old cartoon where Pepe Le Pew shows up and, and the, the odoriferous emanations coming from him in the cartoon and they don't have to have a little caption that says smells like skunk because you can tell from the odorous emanation in the cartoon what's happening. I saw that coming from you, but it was, it was not green like Pepe. I saw purple. I saw the fragrance of God coming in purple from you. But it was like a flower. It was coming out of you and going like this. Was what was happening. That's beautiful in the Lord. And the Lord was saying this. The Lord say, you're, says, you're going to walk into Walmart and my fragrance will go with you. Yeah. Anybody ever walked into Macy's or somewhere like that and you get near the perfume section and you can smell it? Yeah. The Lord says, my people who spend intimate time with me in the secret place are going to be like that perfume. Ooh, I just heard the Holy Spirit singing. Like oil upon your feet, 
like wine for you to drink. Who knows the next verse? Like water from my heart, I'll pour my love on you. Pastor Cindy, what's the next line? I'll lavish mine on you till every drop is gone. I'll pour my love on you. The Lord says that's our love song today. You and me. Hallelujah. The Lord says that's our love song, Pam. The Lord says you feel lost in a season that you don't understand that I've ordained. The Lord says, I want to take you from lost to dialing in your GPS and your colors day in the season. Nice. You know the Lord loves you, right? He says, give me control. He says, will you? Just give me control. The Lord says, give me control. You like to be in control. You like to lead the groups. You said it yesterday. You like to be the manager. You like to be the boss. The Lord says, let me be the boss. The Lord says, I want to show you a whole other way to live. And the Lord said, by the way, one of the reasons why you like to be the boss was it's a defense mechanism. Because if you're the boss, then nobody can hurt you. Amen. Amen. If you're in charge, Sister Pam, nobody can hurt you. The Lord says, it's a defense mechanism. Give me control. I will not hurt you, the Lord says. I will not hurt you, the Lord says. That's getting very personal this morning. Do not hurt me, the Lord says. Lord Pam, the Lord says to you this day, Pam, the Lord says to you, I had to strip away everything so I could get you to a place where I can give you everything. Like oil upon your feet. The Lord says in the season, I'm going to teach you how to put oil on my feet. Though I believe this was spoken yesterday, but I just heard the Holy Spirit say it again. <coughs> I am taking you from being Martha to Mary. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be a whole new way of living. By the way, the ladies that you're ministering to in the ladies group, they need Mary and not Martha. The Lord says, I'm taking <laughs> the Lord says I'm taking you from administration to saturation. Now, you still got the gift of administration, but you're going to be saturated in oil. And it's going to be completely different. It's going to be completely different. How many receive that? Amen. Amen. This is a season where God is revealing things. But he's going deep. The word that God gave for Sam, that was a deep, revelatory, very personal word for her. That God broke loose right in the middle of this family. Here's what God wants you to understand. He says, I'm not cruel. I only reveal so that I can heal. Yeah. And God says, I am beginning to reveal things that are deep down inside of you that you've pressed down. And I'm shining my light on them, but I only reveal so that I can heal. How many receive that? Connie, the Lord says, there's new realms of deliverance for you. I only reveal so that I can heal. But the Lord said, there's some things that we're about to round the corner on, daughter that you've been waiting for. The Lord says, give me control and trust me. That control is just a big thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Right now that Holy Spirit's speaking, Holy Spirit says, give me control and trust me. Trust me. The Lord says, you've had to try to be in control because if you felt, you felt like if you weren't in control, the ball was going to spin out of control. And out of control means you go off the edge. The Lord says, it's not going to happen. The Lord says, just continue to trust me. Continue to give me control. I am ordaining your footsteps and the healing you've wanted for decades is coming. Because the Lord says, there's a mighty mission on the other side of this thing. Ha. Huh. The Lord says to remind you that he's the God who just started using Moses at 80. He said to remind you that he's the God who set Caleb up to kick giants off his mountain at 80. Hallelujah. Come on. The Lord says Moses ministered. Oh, not Moses. The Lord said Noah's call really began at 120. The Lord says, I want you to understand this. 
The Lord said, you've cried out for me for decades. Lord, all of this is keeping me from what you really have for me. The Lord says, Connie, did I not say I saved the, the best wine for last? <coughs> the Lord says, hold on to that. Canaan, Galilee, Canaan, Galilee, Canaan, Galilee. I saved the best wine for last. Healing this. The Lord says, I'm bringing healing to you. And the Lord says, I'm bringing healing to you for multiple reasons because I'm a multidimensional God. The Lord is saying, I'm bringing healing to you for many reasons because I'm a multidimensional God. But the Lord says, you cried out for healing in some areas of your life and I'm gonna move in those areas. But the Lord says, the healing is preparation for some things that are coming. The Lord says, Re receive the healing. Receive the healing, receive the healing. And McGuire's, I heard the Lord say again, I'm healing this family. Hallelujah. I'm healing this family from trauma. I'm healing this family from loss. I'm healing this family from the blows of the enemy. I'm healing this family, the Lord says. Hallelujah. <coughs> you guys receive that? I'm healing this family. Thank you, Lord. Words. The Lord is saying words again. Be very careful with the words that you speak, men and women of God, because yeah. those words become reality. Yeah. Yes. Matter has memory. Yes. Yeah. Even matter absorbs the words that you speak, yeah. and then the enemy pulls on those words. Mm -hmm. The Lord says, I want you to speak words that have no hooks attached to them. The Lord says that means you may be quiet a whole lot more right. in the days that come. Because the Lord says, I've given you an anointed tongue, and now I'm about to teach you to speak when I tell you to speak. The Lord says in the word, when you read about Jeremiah, you see chapters about Jeremiah, but what you don't understand is all the seasons where I didn't allow him to say a word. Lay on your side, man of God. Now turn over and lay on the other side. The Lord is saying, I'm calling you to a whole lot of listening and learning. Then I'm going to have you speak. The Lord says, I want to teach my people in the season to be slow to speak, yeah. quick to listen, yeah. quick to learn, because the enemy is watching your seed. The enemy is monitoring your seed. The enemy dwells in the supernatural. He's a fallen angel. He looks for supernatural activity. The Lord says there's a supernatural anointing on your seed. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I just heard the Lord say babies are coming. Yep. I'm not pretending I fully understand that one. I just heard it. I'm sensing in the Lord part of it is spiritual babies are coming. But I think other babies are coming too. God's timing, God's alignment, God's way. But I'm sensing this in the Lord. Okay? The Lord says, steward the babes. Protect the babes. I'm seeing the woman in the wilderness that represents the church and she's about to give birth and who is right there wanting to grab the baby? Brother Edwards, Brother Ed, who is there wanting to grab the baby? It's the enemy. But what does the Lord do? He opens up the earth <laughs> and catches the baby up and the woman goes into the wilderness. The Lord is saying, I will protect the babies, but I'm calling some of you into the wilderness. Yes. But the Lord says, in the wilderness, prepare ye the way for the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord says, some of you I've called into the wilderness. Hallelujah. But did I not say to Israel, I called you into the wilderness on the wings of eagles so I could have you all to myself. Yeah. There's some of you that God's calling you into the wilderness. What does that mean? I believe part of what Holy Spirit is saying is for some of you, it's been so easy to come into the presence of God. 
The Lord says it's been so easy to feel the Holy Spirit. It's been so easy. You put on a little anointed music and some candlelight and Holy Spirit is there. The Lord says for some, I'm going to remove that. And you're going to have to hunger and thirst for my presence and search for me. And the Lord says, I'm going to meet you in that place. But I want you to hunger. And if anybody in this room is experiencing that, where you just can't seem to get in the presence of God like as easily as you have in previous seasons, the Lord said, did I not say to you, blessed are you and you hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, for you shall be satisfied. The Lord said, this isn't punishment. I'm teaching you how to go deep. The Lord says, when the well goes, goes dry, I'm teaching you how to dig a well deeper. Hallelujah. Because I see a dried up well. But I see you with resolve. And the Holy Spirit is guiding your steps and you're walking away from that well and I see a shovel on your shoulder. And I see you digging deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And you're going to run into a water source that's never going to run dry. The Lord said there's things going on in your life in the season that you think are the enemy. The Lord says they're not. The Lord said, there's things that are me. Oh, the enemy's there too. Okay, the enemy's weak, we know this. But the Lord said, I'm teaching you how to dig deeper wells. Because I'm going to teach you how to get to the water table where the well never runs dry. And you're hungry and you're thirsting and you're saying, God, you don't seem to come like you used to. He's not giving you a hunger and a thirst. And that's not just for mother love. The Lord says, when the well runs dry, do you become satisfied with that state? And do you sit there thinking maybe water will come back into the well? The Lord said, look next to you, there's a shovel. I want to teach you how to dig and how to hunger. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I said, bless are you when you hunger and thirst for righteousness sake, for you shall be Filled. Hallelujah. What did the Lord say? You're blessed when you hunger and thirst. We've been in seasons where the presence of God has come so quickly. We haven't had to hunger and thirst. Do you know what that can do to us? It can make us take the presence of God for granted. There's going to be a time, the Lord said, when my spirit is pulled from the earth and woe to the inhabitants of the earth. But the Lord says right now, if you don't feel my spirit the way you used to, will you sit there at the dry well and weep? Or will you grab the shovel and dig? Hallelujah. Is anybody hearing that word? That's important. Will you grab the shovel and dig? Because the Lord says, I am the water table. I am the fount of living water. What did the Lord say to Israel at one point when they were seeking other gods? The Lord said this to Israel. He said, you've forsaken me, the spring of living water, and you've hewn for yourself cisterns that will never satisfy. <coughs> Broken cisterns. See, in Israel, there was three water sources. One was a cistern. It was a rock, and they hewn it out. And when the rain fell, it caught the rainwater. How many know that water was real good for a couple days until the birds and the animals discovered it? <laughs> then what happened to your water? Okay. The next was a well. A well provides really good water until the water table drops. The third source of water in Israel was a spring. And a spring would give continuous good, cold, pure water. And do you know what the Jews called springs? living water. That's why the Lord said, you've forsaken me, the spring of living water, and hewn for yourself broken cisterns that will never satisfy. Some of us have been seeking after broken sisters that will never satisfy. The Holy Spirit said it. <laughs> Don't look at me. The Holy Spirit said it. But the Lord said, many have tried to drink from cisterns they'll never satisfy. Yeah. What's a cistern? You hewing that thing out and you catch the water. 
The Lord says, I am the spring of living water. You have to come to me and drink. We've been drinking in some other places. The Lord says, I want to teach you how to only come to me and drink so that any other type of water will never satisfy you again. Anybody ever gone to a restaurant, you order ice water and you take one drink and it's city water and you taste all the chlorine and all of that. The Lord says, I want to make any other form of water taste like that to you. So that when you taste of me, you know that's the only way that you can be satisfied. Hallelujah. I hear radical change. I'm calling you to radical change. And the Lord said, the fire is coming. The fire is coming, but the fire will purify. Okay? Right now, Geo, God's putting some things in alignment in your life in a beautiful way. The fire's coming. The Lord says, I want you to press into me like never before. Like never before. Yeah. On my birthday too. He wants, to wants you to really rely on him. Don't be surprised if God kind of whittles some things away, Gio. So that you can have dove's eyes for him. Dove's eyes for him. How many are receiving what the Spirit of God is saying? Amen. You know, it's interesting right now, Holy Spirit is saying, timing, timing, timing. My timing, my timing, my timing. The timing of the Lord is becoming more important than ever before. Yes. God says, I want you to walk in my Kairos timing. Ask me before you do anything. Seek me before you make any decision. Trust me. The Lord says, I'm wanting to make some of you a whole lot more dependent on me than you've ever been before. But the Lord says to remind you, dependency is not weakness, it's strength. <laughs> oh, he loves you. <laughs> he says dependency isn't weakness, it's strength. And the Lord says there's strength that I put in you that you've never walked in before because control has gotten in the way. And he says, I'm going to take you from control to surrender to strength. And it's going to be an amazing journey in him. The Lord says, I want to open up your prophetic mouth again. He says, I want to open up your prophetic mouth again. The Lord said there's been a whole lot of distractions. And the distractions have caused your prophetic mouth to do this. The Lord says, I'm going to open up your prophetic mouth. Yeah. The Lord yeah. says, don't doubt you're at where, I, where I've called you to, by the way. He says, don't doubt that. I hear the Lord say, I'm going to open up your prophetic mouth. One of the reasons why God called you to this church is because this is a prophetic church and God is going to use this house to put prophetic jumper cables back on you. And boom! And he's going to open up your prophetic mouth again. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Lord says, don't focus on that man. He said, focus on the God man. And watch what I'm going to do. You know what the Lord's talking about? Yeah. Yeah, he said, I'm going to get the flow back in line that your prophetic mouth is going to open again. But the Lord says, I'm refining and I'm renewing and I'm restoring that mouth. And that prophetic mouth is going to speak like never before. And the Lord said, there's some healing that I'm going to do. The Lord said, there's some healing that I'm going to do. Because the Lord said, you've been worried about some things. Okay? The enemy's trying to tell you, you're kind of going off the edge a little bit. He's spoken it through the mouths of people. And the problem is what we hear long enough, we believe. But the Lord said, I'm going to bring healing. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to bring healing. He said, I will keep in perfect peace the one whose mind is steady or staying upon me. And the Lord said, I'm going to take you out of a place where there's been chaos and disorder and all the stuff with that. And God said, I'm pulling you out of that and you're going to go from this focus to this focus. And your prophetic jaw is going to open and then the word of God prophetically is going to come out of you. Hallelujah. Like never before. Better. Better. Like never before, the Lord says. Your presence matters in this body. Yeah. Yeah. Your presence matters in this body. I hear the Lord say, you've been the outcast, you've been misunderstood, you haven't fit in like ever. 
the Lord said, I'm going to open up your mouth and I'm giving you a place. He says, I'm, I'm giving you a place. He said, I am bringing you to a spacious place without restriction. I'm hearing the prayer of Jabez. Lord, bless me indeed. Expand my territory. Come on. May your hand be upon me. Keep me from harm and harming others. Remember Genesis 26, 12, 13, and 14. Around verse 22, he digs a well that's finally uncontested. And he names that well Roboath. And he said, because the Lord has put a wide space under my feet. The Lord says, you felt like your space has been like this. You're going to look up. I'm going to open up your prophetic mouth and I'm going to put a wide space underneath your feet. Yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord said, that's about to change. Yeah, that's that's about to change. And don't be surprised if a move isn't coming. Not out of this region, God's rooting you. But don't be surprised if a move of some type isn't coming, and I'm not sure what that is. Hallelujah. Seek the Lord on that. Hallelujah. The Lord is saying right now, the enemy has been fighting so fiercely because he fears the breakthrough that's coming. That's why the fight of the enemy has been has been so fierce. God spoke through Prophet Trippy yesterday and the Lord spoke this word to this body. We need to be praying over Scott and we need to be praying over Dana more than we're doing right now. Decreeing and declaring the word of God because he said if the enemy is allowed to take out either of them, then the enemy is going to go after other people that are on his list. Mm -hmm. That's why we need to be speaking over, over them that they're going to live and not die and declare the works of the Lord. Yeah. Yes, Lord. And Lord Jesus, we give the enemy's hit list. We take it out of his hand and we give it to you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. And Lord, may that be now become the list where you're going to pour out the most oil, Lord God, upon those that the yeah. enemy wanted to take out. Guys, I told Brother Scott this on Thursday night. I said, God did not bring you and care into this house, caring revival for you to go home before it's truly birthed. Amen. Amen. And God... Has brought more than one person to this house to birth things. Amen. Brother Ed, the Lord says this to you. What happens to a woman who's about to give birth to a child? She goes into travail and in unspeakable pain. God says, Out of your unspeakable pain in the past years, I'm going to bring a birth thing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And something mighty is going to be birthed through you. And Brother Ed, he says, your pain has a purpose. It's going to bring a birth thing. Because the Lord says, you're carrying something that he wants to birth in this place. Not only in this place, in a lot of other places too. Amen. Amen. Yes. The Lord says, trust me. The Lord says, trust me, Brother Ed. The Lord says, trust me. He's bringing you into a season where he's going to dig down deep and really pull some roots. But the Lord says, don't worry, I only reveal so that I can heal. I see a mighty healing of the Lord coming, but I see travail and birthing coming also. Stay, Brother Ed. Stay. Trust. Root. Root. The Lord says, this pain is a purpose. Root. Trust him. The Lord has so much healing to come. Some healing will be supernatural with no one laying a hand on you. Some of it's going to happen. I see you in your car with your hands up and you're spending time with the Lord because the Lord says that car is kind of a secret place to you. I hear the Lord also saying some of that healing is going to come through the love of people Amen. in this house. The very thing the enemy used to bring great pain to you, church and church people, the Lord says is also going to be a great source of healing. Hallelujah. 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 The Lord says, stand firm, don't, don't run. Stand firm, stand firm. Trust him, trust him, trust him. The Lord says to you, Brother Ed, sometimes to get healing, there has to be vulnerability. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because you have to remove the outer covering and reveal mm -hmm. the wounded area. Woo. So it can be cleansed and the balm of Gilead can be put on it. The Lord says, trust me. 
when things are revealed, you're not going to be judged, shunned, or further wounded. But the healing's going to come. The healing's going to come. Hallelujah. How many receive that in the Lord? Hallelujah. By the way, brother, that's not the only one. I see some people and the Lord is coming to you and, and he has the balm of Gilead in his hands and you're standing like this. You're standing like this. And the Lord says, I'm going to bring such healing and freedom in you that you can go like this. And the Lord says, I'm going to open up those areas and put the balm of Gilead in them. And I'm going to bring healing. The Lord says, I can't send you to Israel until I heal your soul. Because you can't take soul wounds to Israel with you. The Lord said, part of the reason why I brought you to this house was to bring healing to you. And the Lord says, don't view this time where you're waiting for the healing and pressing in as delay. And view it as investment. Because it's very important what God wants to do. And by the way, your presence matters in this house. I say this to you periodically. Your presence matters in this house. How many received that? Thank you, Jesus. Denise, the Lord says, you're a deeper well than most people realize. Denise, the Lord says, there's a lot that he's put in you that people don't realize when they see you. They take you at face value and they judge you and they don't realize the wealth of what God's put in you. We're glad you're in this house. Hallelujah. Yay. We're glad you're in this house. God's not done working on you yet either, by the way. Hallelujah. 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 There's some things that God wants to go deep in and heal. I really believe part of the purpose of the secret place in the next four weeks is that God wants to go deep and do a real healing in us. Mm -hmm. By the way, the Lord is saying for some of us, healing will come as we ask for forgiveness. The Lord says, for some, healing will come as we forgive. And the Lord says, I'm really releasing and anointing for forgiveness and healing right now. Because the Lord says, I want you to go into this new year without carrying unforgiveness. Because unforgiveness will create boulders that block the flow of the spring. Yes. And the Lord's saying, there's some people that have some very deep wounds. He's working on wounds in me too. Okay? God's saying there's some people with very deep wounds. And God wants to get to those wounds. And part of what's going to bring healing is forgiveness. Because the enemy wants to take you in this new year from unforgiveness to bitterness. God wants to take you from unforgiveness to forgiveness and healing and flowing. So some of us don't be surprised if the holidays are not confrontational for you. Amen. Christmas and New Year's, where God's just really dealing with things in you and using family as sandpaper. Huh? Don't be afraid to reach out to your mom during Christmas. God's doing something. There's a whole lot of hurt God's getting ready to heal. Because God says, I've got to heal that hurt in you. So you are an unhindered stream when you really begin to minister again. And he kind of stepped out a little bit and he he's fought. God says, I'm calling you into consistency. I'm calling you into a season where I'm really going to bring deep healing, a lot of deep hurts. I see the Lord God going back to when you were a little girl. I see God doing some really deep healing. And then I see you flowing right in there. And it's beautiful. And it's really God. It's really, really God. Guys, don't be afraid to step out. Don't be afraid to step out. This is very, very important. How many are hearing what the Lord is saying? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, the Lord didn't let me oh, get to the notes. If the Lord allows me next week to get to the notes, the Lord's going to have me teach on the blood and the glory. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Because we've got to understand the power of the blood if we're ever going to see the glory. 
How many received that? The Lord is saying for many of us, the key for you to get to where God wants to take you is for you to begin speaking the word of God over yourself every day. Amen. The Lord says, speak my word over yourself and over situations. Nice. And watch what I'm going to do. The Lord said, speak my word over yourself and over situations. My word will not return void. Amen. Sister Jean, there's healing God wants to do in your family. Do you know your siblings don't even really know who you are? I've heard Holy Spirit say they don't know who you are in the realm of the Spirit. They kind of what you do here is kind of what you do here, and your family's kind of over there. The Lord said those spheres are not going to be separated much longer. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And the Lord said, really, the separation hasn't been your desire. It's just been, you just felt like it's had to be that way. <laughs> and the Lord says, sometimes you've even said to him, God, why am I so this when I'm here? But I get around my family. And it's just like, and this isn't just for Sister Jean. And it's just like, I'm, I'm, I'm not that person. <laughs> the Lord says, that's about to change. But I also heard the Lord say, a prophet's not accepted in their own hometown. Mm. Okay? Jesus wasn't accepted by his family either. But I hear the Lord saying, those spheres that are like this are going to become like this. And your family is going to see who you really are. And it's going to open up the door for healing in your family. God is going to invade your family. You are the beachhead. Okay? Because others in your family don't know him like you do. That's frustrated you. But you've been the beachhead. And you're the one that God, the Lord says you're the forerunner for your family. Yes. And the Lord says the time is coming where the way that you flow, and this is what I'm seeing, Sister Jean, the way you flow here is the way you're going to flow when you're around your family. Because the Lord says, you know something special happens there. And the Lord says, this is a very special place between you and him. He said that's one of the reasons why when we considered a change with the prayer carpet, you were like, whoa, wait a minute. Because you know something special happens over there. You know what the Lord says? What happens here is going to begin happening when you're with your family. And you're not going to feel like you're two people. One here and one around your family. God says, I'm going to do this. And you're going to be able to be who you really are all the time. Hallelujah. Nice. Even, even around your dad. Because the Lord, I see the Lord doing this, he's going to see you. Yeah. He's going to see you. Uh, he's going to see. And Sister Jean, the Lord says, your faithfulness is one of the reasons why God's going to do this. He says, I see there's a woman in the Old Testament that had an encounter with the Lord and she came out of that encounter and said this, you are the God who sees. Mm -hmm. You are the God who hears. And the Lord says, you're about to do that with him. <laughs> because these, dis these, these disconnected spheres are going to come together in your life. And the Lord says, also, Sister Jean, when that happens, there's a whole lot of things that are going to make sense that don't right now. Praise God. The Lord says even some things that happen in the military. Even some things that happen post-military are going to begin making sense when I invade your family and they see who you really are. Because the Lord says you feel like in some ways that you're in a room and there's a table in front of you with disconnected puzzle pieces and the lights went off. And you're going, the Lord said, the lights are about to come on and he's going to take your hand in his and move the puzzle pieces into place. And as they start to, you know, there's a place when you're putting a puzzle together that, you know, let's say that the puzzle's handed to you in a Ziploc bag. 
so you don't see the picture on the box lid. It's like you feel like you've been handed puzzle pieces in a Ziploc bag and it's your past and your present, your future in some ways. But the Lord said, I'm spreading those pieces out on the table and I see like a, a card table. And God's putting his hand in yours and as the picture starts coming together, I see you going, oh, oh, oh. And you're just amazed. It's like realms of amazement as the picture keeps coming together. And about the time you think to yourself, I don't think it can be any better than this, God puts another corner together. And you go, oh. I mean, you're just amazed at what God does. And by the time the picture is complete, you're who you are in every area of your life. And it's really, really good. The Lord wouldn't let me go to communion until you got that word. It's very, very important to the Lord. Amen. Um, you know, if the Lord didn't specifically give you a word in this time together today, it doesn't mean there's something wrong with you or God doesn't care. The Lord gave a lot of words that applied to multiple people. Does that make sense? Yeah. And I don't want this house to be like the house where prophets show up and, you know, a few select people get words and everybody else are kind of duds. That, that's, not the, that's not how God is. Right. God had a word within the words for everybody in this room. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Because that's who our God is. Yeah. He says, I call you by name and I know the number of hairs on your head. Yeah. How many receive that? Yeah. He says, I call you by name and I know the number of hairs on your head. Yeah. You know, the Lord spoke to me this morning also and he said, Andrew, there's a whole new way that this house is going to minister. He says, we need to speak, seek the Holy Spirit on what that looks like. Because he said years ago, this house is going to be a prototype. And God is going to do things in this house. And people are going to come from secret churches and pastors and leaders like Azusa Street. They're going to come here and they're going to go, how does this work? Wow. Yeah. And they're going to spend time with us and we're going to teach them. Wow. Amen. Hezekiah opened up his treasuries and he showed them all the wealth of Israel. And Isaiah showed up later and said, who are those men? Well, they're Babylonians. What would you do? I showed them all my wealth. Yeah, the day's coming when all of it's going to go to Babylon. Even some of your own sons will go in chains and will serve him, the king of Babylon. One of the saddest statements in the Bible. And King Hezekiah said, it is good, for he thought to himself, at least this won't happen in my generation. Mm -hmm. The Lord said, we're going to open up our treasuries and Jesus is going to be all that's inside. Yeah. Hallelujah. And they will come. And Edward, you will be one of the tour guides. Wow. Nice. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You surrender the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. You're going to be a tour guide in the midst of all this nice. on that issue. Hallelujah. Well, somebody just say the Lord is good. The Lord is good. Yeah. You know, I love it when God does this. Yeah. Yesterday I got in the secret place to look more at the notes on the blood of Jesus. And these things just weren't happening. <laughs> you know, anybody ever been there before? Things just were not happening. And I'm going, God, you know, I need this work for tomorrow. <laughs> you know, and now I'm going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Somebody say, yeah. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. You know, this is a prophetic church. And God is refining our prophetic mouths. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory. Well, guys, we're going to get ready to take communion. How many know communion is the meal that heals? Yeah. Amen. And I believe this day, as we partake of communion, there's going to be people to get healing as we partake of the bread. <coughs> right? Jesus said to the Syrophoenician woman, is it, is it right to take the children's bread and give it to the dogs? And she said, but Lord, even the dogs eat from the scraps that fall from the children's table. And Jesus looked at her and said, such great faith. Anybody ever notice in the word that when Jesus said such great faith, he was usually saying it to a Gentile? Yeah. <laughs> Syrophoenician woman, centurion. 
<laughs> He's marveling at the faith of the Gentiles. How many know that was a prophetic picture? Hallelujah. That Israel would reject him, but the Gentiles would put their faith in him. But then in his time, the Gentiles would bring Jesus back to the Jews. <laughs> And they'd fulfill Zechariah 12.10. And I will pour out over Israel the spirit of supplication. And they will look upon me whom they pierced and they'll recognize me. And long for me as one longs or mourns for an only son. How many receive that in the Lord? Amen. Hallelujah. Glory, glory, glory. I want to thank everybody that's joined us this morning for the broadcast. I'm going to say this again. I believe there's some watching this broadcast today that are in this region and God's calling you to come to this house. I believe there's some watching this broadcast from other regions and God is calling you to move into this region and be a part of the revival that he's about to release. Now, if you're listening in, I want to encourage you to take that to the Holy Spirit and listen to the Holy Spirit on that. But I believe that word is for some that are listening in. Because I believe God's about to birth awakening and revival in the Rock River Valley region. And you're supposed to be a part of it. Guys, we love our virtual family, don't we? Amen. Amen. We love you guys and we bless you guys in the name of Jesus. In a moment, we're going to go into communion. I'm going to ask Cindy to, to turn off the broadcast in a moment. But for our virtual family, I just pray over you now. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and fill you with shalom peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. May the Lord shalom you and shalom you. We bless you, our virtual family, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just